I'm Sarah Gerudo, and this is my capstone project. It's called one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So 83% improvement. This is what I found of how much someone can improve through one-on-one -on -one tutoring, which is a significant amount. We just did one unit of pre-test and post-test, and she improved 83%. So, as I said, one-on-one -on -one tutoring by Sarah Gerudo. My driving question for this was, how can I help younger elementary students who need access to private tutoring in my community? So, I'm Sarah. I'm in the Arts, Hospitality, and Education pathway here at CCHS, primarily the education one. I'm interested in dance. I like doing good in school and then hanging out with my friends. Uh, some of my activities that I do here at school is I'm in NHS, which is National Honor Society, I'm in Link Crew, and I'm in Student Council here. I want to go to college and I want to be a teacher for younger children or I want to be a lawyer, one of those two. Okay. My professional consultant was Ashley Milam. Uh, she is a third grade teacher at Mountain View Core Knowledge School. She has her Bachelor's of Elementary Education for Western University and Master's in mathemati Mathematics for K through 6. So a summary of my capstone is pretty basic. I just tutored a girl one-on-one -on -one in multiplication to help her improve her math skills in a specific unit. The purpose of this is just to help kids who don't really qualify for help in a way because there's so many kids that are in special education and that's great for them. They get the teacher, they get the private tutoring, but then there's so many that just don't qualify for that special education, but they still need help. And so that was kind of my purpose for this was to access a child who qualified for like extra help, but not like severe extra help. And the goal of this capstone was for her to basically just get a good grade at the end of the uh, post-test, which I was able to accomplish, um, and basically just improve her math skills for future units. And then the background info for this, um, I of course knew how to multiply, so that was kind of the point of this and then also being in the teacher's cadet program I was at the time so it was really learning how to teach kids in that class and that really helped me with this project. So this is my timeline and process. On November 6th Miss Milam and I deliberated on what student to tutor and then created a permission slip for her and sent it home. Um, after that she her mom said yes that we could do this as long as I kept her identity anonymous for this. On November 7th, I then gave her the pretest and she got 0% on that pretest. For the 8th through the 15th of November, I tutored her on how to multiply two by three digit numbers and we just worked on that and really it was a repetitive process. Uh, for November 28th through December 5th, I worked with her on various worksheets and that basically just showed me where she was at and what she was still struggling with. And then finally, December 6th is when I gave her her post-test and that's when she got 83%. Like I said at the beginning of this, is a huge improvement from her 0%. And then you can see this is her pre-test and this is her post-test. Um, she got 0% on this pretest, and you can see that there are many questions she didn't even attempt to answer because she didn't know how to. And then there were some she did, but she still got those wrong. And then on her post-test, with only a few weeks really of tutoring, she was able to get almost every single one right, which is just amazing, I think. So for the first one, knowledge and communication. For reading and writing, how I accomplished this and used reading and writing in my capstone is I basically used daily notes every day and kept track of what I was doing and that basically helped me look back and go, okay, so this is what she was struggling with that day, so this is what I can do to improve it the next day. I, of course, also did my uh, pre-search paper and then uh, the permission letter was another example of reading and writing 
because I wrote that myself and sent it to the mom myself. And then for communicating, um, I communicated with the student I tutored to see how she learned best. And then I also communicated with Miss Milam a lot on exactly how to tutor a child in a way. And then just teaching the material itself was also communication. So yeah, as I said, examples, discussions with Ms. Milam, co collaboration with the student, and then just like meetings with Ms. Milam specifically on how the day went. This is my evidence for communication. As you can see, this email here just shows that I emailed her saying that I'm gonna be in the Teacher's Cadet program and I'm gonna be joining her classroom and start this tutoring process. And then that's just me communicating with some of the students in the class. Okay, so this is my first math principle and I chose the third one, constructs viable arguments and critiques the reasoning of others. So I showed this by creating this graph right here. So this longer line right here is the child I tutored and this basically just shows that she got 10 out of 12 on her post-test. But then what Ms. Milam and I did is we took all the kids who got 0% like she did on her pretest, and we averaged their scores together on their post-test and their average scores was only 2.88 or 17%. So my, the girl I tutored was able to improve by 83%, but the kids without tutoring was only able to prove, improve by 17%. My second math principle is uh, the first one, make sense of all types of problems to pers persevere in solving them. So how I did this was finding the right student to tutor. This took a lot of perseverance, I would say, because we originally landed on one student, but then we uh, had her take the pretest and she got like the best score in the class. So we needed to find a new student. Um, multiplying by nine was another kind of persevering problem because that was the one that she struggled the most with was learning how to multiply with her nines. So I used this trick to basically help her um, and I really saw the realization in her and once I finally figured out how to communicate with her on how to do that. And then just finally reaching the intended goal on time because it was only like from around uh, November to December like three or four weeks so just being able to uh, have her process all that information in a specific amount of time was kind of crucial to this capstone and something that I really wanted to accomplish and then this is my third math principle uh, I chose the eighth one looks for and expresses regularity and repeated reasoning so learning how to teach multiplication in itself is just kind of repeated reasoning because you have to just do every problem over with her again and again, like even just the simple ones, like nine times three. So you really need to repeat that. Having flexibility with setbacks was another one because it's not always gonna work out the way you think it is. Like you're not gonna like give her an assignment and she's gonna do perfect on it. There's always gonna be a setback and you're always gonna need to learn how to communicate better, I think. And then just planning ahead, I saw really helped me and part of that was in the daily notes I took, just planning ahead on, okay, this method worked best when I was teaching her, but this method really did not work at all. And then for this picture here, this was just a little warm up activity I did with her one day and it's just grouping M&Ms on Ritz crackers and you can kind of just get a visual representation. And I really noticed that like visual representations helped her a lot, which um, really was a good uh, thing for us to do. So we did a lot of visual representations. Okay, for my first trait or traits, it's tenacity and reflection. So uh, this assignment that we did right here, I think it took some tenacity because I'm pretty sure this was one of the first assignments we did together. And as you can see here, there's a lot of grouping and writing involved, which was kind of a new process for her and for me because I hadn't really done this kind of like table multiplication in such a long time. And then, uh, 
Also just uh, color coding, we found that really helped because then she wouldn't get confused on which numbers and which rows she was on. So what I learned from this is that you have to be patient because you can't expect the child to just know what you know and you have to really be patient and go, no, that was the wrong number, you need to erase it. And then uh, how do you get, engage the student in learning? This is was a difficult one because in, like multiplication, just if a, she's not picking it up right away, it can be really hard to get her engaged. So doing visual activities, like I told you with the M&Ms and Ritz crackers was one way I could get her engaged at the beginning of the lesson. Um, how to tell what she was struggling with was another big one. I learned that like through reflection, I would say by looking back at my notes and looking back at the assignments like this one and saying, okay, so she got this problem wrong when I wasn't helping her, but if I helped her with this one a lot, then she was getting it right. And then for another reflection, uh, how to reflect on the assignment and see what I can do better because it is kind of a two-way street. If I'm not understanding it or communicating that to her, then she's not gonna get it. So kind of reflecting back on what I could have done better through each tutoring session helped me. And then for how can I apply this for my own life, just reflecting on my own work and reflecting on how I can do better, like how she did with her work. And then just continuing to work hard throughout the rest of my um, school career, really, for tenacity and not giving up and redoing stuff when it needs to be redone. For my other one, I chose integrity and leadership. So this is just some of the work we did. As you can see, this shows integrity because this was her post-test work and you can really see how I did not help her at all on the post-test. That was all her. So it was really rewarding to see that she was understanding this without my help at the end. So I learned not to give her answers at the beginning. Like I learned that she needs to take her time and she needs to go slow to get the answers on her own. And that really helped because then by the end I could say, okay, just do this problem by yourself. And she was able to do it all by herself and get it right. Um, then arriving early to my internship and arriving early to the tutoring sessions um, was really important for me and I think it showed some integrity because I wanted to be there and I wanted to help her. And that kind of goes into the next thing which is just coming prepared because when I came prepared and I kind of knew what we were going to do that day and what I wanted to focus on with her that day, whether or it was like color coding or just going through problems again and again. Um, it really helped her know uh, what to do and how to do it and it just made the whole thing faster. And then for application, how I can use this in my life, uh, giving everyone credit where credit is due I found was important because it wasn't just me who accomplished this, it was the girl I was tutoring because she really wanted to learn and she wanted to do this and she wanted to get better which I just really appreciated. Um, and so I can apply that to my life by just giving everyone their credit when I do a project like this. And then for integrity, just having her do her own work, I found was important because it did take a lot of like holding her hand in the beginning and telling her how to do it. But by the end, having her do her own work and show for that really helped. And as you can see in this, you, this is all her. I didn't do any of that. Okay, so my lessons learned. From this project, I learned that tutoring is a kind of a big responsibility when it's one-on-one -on -one because it's just me doing it. No one else is helping her with this. I also learned how much it, easier it can be with a child who wants to learn. Like I just said, she really wanted to learn and she wanted to understand and do good on her test. So that really helped me and I just really appreciated her for that. And then doing this project to show me that teaching is a way itself to help a child. Like, there are so many ways to help children who are struggling, and I found teaching and tutoring is probably one of the best things you can do to help someone. Um, my project answered the driving question because I was able to help a child in my communi community through tutoring. I learned about teaching and how to apply it to a child in need. Um, this was important 
for me because like I feel like there's always at least a handful of kids in the classroom who need that extra tutoring but just don't receive it. And then the biggest challenge I faced was trying to find a child, like I said earlier, because we did test for one other child and we were pretty certain that was who I was going to tutor, but she got um, like the best score in the class on the pretest. So we had to kind of go through all the test scores again and see who could be, who would be like willing to improve and who I could tutor um, smoothly. And then this connects to my future aspirations because if I become a teacher one day, this was a really helpful process in learning what it, being a teacher is like. Okay, this is my call to action. I basically just want to encourage all of you to find the children in your classroom that need that extra help and provide it to them because I found that one-on-one -on -one tutoring is can basically be all that a child needs to succeed because you there's so much evidence out there that shows children without the tutoring would get much lower test scores. Like I told you earlier, uh, the kids without the tutoring only improved by 17% compared to her who improved 83%. So really just look for those kids and try and provide the extra help that they need.